Yo, Elliot, what is your game plan for if SHTF happens? Which, uh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, SHTF stands for Shit Hits the Fan. So, as in lockdowns, etc. Um, as a king, how would you approach it? So, this is great because this is something that I've been thinking about for quite a few years now. Uh, and I really started to put things into high gear in 2020, and it's part of the reason why I am where I am right now, here living on the ranch in rural Florida, because it was a top, it was a top thing on my list uh, in order to prepare for the coming challenges that we may face. Uh, one of the first things that I had on my mind, besides basic preps like water and food, was to get out of the cities, get out of the cities. So uh, I don't. You know, I'm not an expert in 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 this these types of situations, right? But there are guys that spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff. There are guys who have lived through economic collapse in Venezuela or Argentina. Um, there are people that are left over from all kinds of uh, civilization collapse, and they've got a lot of tips for us. They got a lot of information for us. They got a lot of ideas. And there are people that study those ideas and share them as influencers, right? I'm not one of those guys, but I talk about these things because I talk about all things related to becoming strong men in this degenerate age. So what I'd like to do today is introduce you to one of my favorite resources, uh, Mike Adams. He calls himself the, the health ranger. I've spoken about him several times. Uh, he's a really smart guy. He's a scientist. He's a uh, he, he owns a lab where he makes supplements and he's a survivalist and he, there's a whole lot that he does he's like one of these like savants right like polymath savants he's just smart in everything and he, and he can talk circles around you as it relates to everything and so one of the things that he takes up is uh how to survive during the inevitable coming economic collapse lockdowns and these shtf type situations and so uh, last week he had an article up that said that was uh, titled um, 50 Steps for Survival. It says the tide is turning 50 steps for survival and victory against the destroyers. And so, like I said, I've been studying his stuff for quite some time. Uh, he, in fact, in fact, I really started getting into his work when he put out a free course that you can get that's called um, that's about how to survive how to survive the coming collapse. And I, maybe you can get it on his website, naturalnews.com. Let me see if it's still, if he's still giving it away up there. Uh, it's called Survive the Global Reset. If you want to go in, it's like a nine hour course. I'm going to click the link here so I can give you guys the, uh, the URL. It's not an easy URL, but I'll, I'll put it in the chat for you guys. Go and download this. It's like a nine-hour audio where he really goes in-depth as to what to do in order to survive this global reset. And he gives you, uh, you know, the story behind it also. He's not just uh, being sensational when he, when he offers this information, you know, like, hey, be afraid. This is what's happening and I can solve your problems, that kind of thing. No, he goes into the history and he goes into the, the, the mindset of why this is inevitable, why they're doing it, how they're planning on doing it. And it's so funny, uh, I this was recorded prior to uh, or right around the time of the, the, the when the lockdown started. And a lot of the things that he spoke about has have come to fruition. So if you listen to the audio and you think back about like the past 12 months, a lot of what he says in this audio came to fruition. Not all of it, but he's definitely on the right path. So that's Mike Adams. I suggest if this is something that is of interest to you, go and study his work. What I'll do today, though, is I'm going to recite uh, or just go through that list of 50 items for survival and victory. I'll tell you a little bit about where I am with regard to each one. So that, of course, you could see I take this very seriously. I think that uh, as a, especially as a father and as a husband, as a family man, uh, it is our vocation. It's our main vocation, vocation in life to provide and protect. And that means don't rest on your laurels. Don't be lazy. Don't get caught with your pants down. That's one of the things they'll say. 
So with that in set, with that being said, I take this list very seriously. So I'm going to go through them very quickly for you. You can listen to Mike Adams. He goes through a list on this in his podcast also. But you're here with me and you're asking me the question. So I'm going to tell you what I do, where I get my resources, and, um, and what you can do also. So full list. I'll go through them really quickly. Number one, buy rural land in a red county, in a red state, preferably not at sea level. That's, that's number one on his list. And it was the main objective for me come 2020, right? There are a lot of these things that I'm going to say on the list moving down, but I had, to, I knew that I could have all my preps in place, but if I was in the wrong place, that my plan could be compromised, right? So what does that mean? Red County in a red state, that means not Democrat, <laughs> right? You don't want to be in LA. You don't want to be in New York. You don't want to be in these... Uh, these counties, these cities, and these states that are run by bad guys. And it's the bad guys that are for, like, so for example, I live in Florida. Our governor DeSantis has just outlawed mask mandates. Now, I don't know what your opinion is on that. Maybe you love the fucking masks. I don't know. But our governor is a freedom loving, libertarian leaning type Republican uh, uh, leader. Uh, that's what we want. And then so we also were living in Pinellas County at the time, and that's a blue county, right? It's where it's in a, there's cities there, St. Pete, Clearwater. And so uh, even though well, now DeSantis has outlawed it and no county is allowed to enforce it back in early, you know, 2020 when DeSantis was like, it's up to the counties. Of course, our, our county was like, oh, you got to wear it, right? Because Democrats love demonic oppression. They love to force people to do things. I was saying it earlier before. I remember when I was in my 20s, I, I considered myself a liberal. And back then it was because I was anti-establishment. It's so funny. It's so strange how liberals 20 years ago were anti truly anti-establishment, laissez-faire. Today, liberals are pro-establishment. They want to force you to take the shot. They want to force you to put masks on. They love government tyranny. It's the strangest thing. And I'm not sure how that, that swap happened. It almost seemed like Republicans or conservatives were more pro-establishment. Um, but, but things have changed now. And if you're living amongst Democrats, if you're a Democrat, right, I'm talking about in the U.S., right, liberals in the, in the U.S., blue states, uh, be ready for tyranny. Be ready for somebody to tell you what to do and to force you to do it by, uh, by the end of a barrel. Boom, right? You got to get out of those states. And there's a beautiful thing about living in America is that each state is sovereign, right? And, and, and more and more are we exercising that sovereignty. I went to a, uh, a medical freedom uh, seminar, talk, workshop the other day. Colleen and I are heavily involved with medical freedom in our state. And the woman who was speaking made a really good point. She says, how many people know the American Constitution? And a lot of guys, they were raising their hand. And he said, she said, how many people know the American Bill of Rights? People were raising their hand. They could recite at least a few of them. You know, there was some kind of, fam they were familiar with what the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in the nation were. But then she said, what about Florida. Do you know the Constitution of Florida? Nobody knew. It was, it was a Florida event. Nobody knew it. What about the Bill of Rights in Florida? Nobody knew. And so the point she was trying to make was that as things unfold, things start getting weirder, power, the consolidated power begins to fracture. And in the states, we have the capacity to pull away as individual sovereign states. And in doing so, we should know how things are run in our state and which and really politics needs to come back home po you know we're sitting here you know a lot of people are sitting here grumbling about who's the president but meanwhile they have no idea who their state representatives are right they don't know how to call them get in contact with them they don't know what they stand for they you know of course you have the governor that's important but what about your uh your county right your city start getting involved in local politics and making the change at the grassroots levels if you can it might be too late and that's why mike adams says go to a rural place rural land this is what I did, right? I have no neighbors anymore, uh, which is not always good, right? Because they say nobody will hear the screams. Ah! Nobody will hear the screams out here. <laughs> and good thing I got a lot of, I got a lot of, I got a lot of protection. 
So uh, Red County, Red State, preferably not at sea level. Well, I'm above sea level here, even though I'm in Florida. So let's move on. Uh, number two, access to water via non-electric means. That means have a lake, have a pond, and also, number three, have water filtration. Water filtration including a gravity filter. So I have a Berkey. Use a Berkey filter. You should have a Berkey filter. Number four, soil, seeds, fertilizer, and tools for growing and sprouting food. I bought a shit ton of sprouting stuff. I can put the sprout uh, container in front of a window and sprout. I can, you could live off sprouts, so I can, I can sprout. Also, I have a lot of grass here, and if you live where there's a lot of grass, you can, you can it's not great, but if it boils down to it, you can eat grass. You can, you can make grass juice, right? And you should have a hand crank uh, juicer. And so, uh, those are a little weird, but you should be able to learn how to grow. And my plan is to, is to like I did back in, when I was living in the suburbs, I started planting fruit trees. So over here, I'm going to start planting fruit trees. I live in Florida. I should have orange trees. Number five, stored food so you can get through. You should learn how to can. Everybody should know how to can. You should know how to uh, freeze dry, right? I bought a, a food dehydrator and a canner, right? When you go to the supermarket and you're buying meat, right, preferably like ground beef and stuff like that, stew meat, if it's on sale, buy extra now, and that way you can, um, you can can it. You gotta be able to can you should you be able to preserve. I've got a great book here. I got a lot of great books on this stuff. Somebody somebody was asking about this the other day. I think in the Facebook group. They were asking, uh, Elliot, do you I wanna learn how to how to smoke meat? So here's a guide to canning, freezing, curing, and smoking meat, fish, and game. Right? You should have books like this. Uh, number six, have a lot of salt. Salt is, is also good for per, preserving, curing. Uh, cooking, you should have some kind of a wood stove or a, an ability to cook without electricity. I have propane. Shelter, right? Even if you need to, like, a, 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 like a bug out shelter, you should have tents, right? A tent. Cordage, he says. Ropes, twine, string, fishing line. Fire starters, right a little like you know these magnesium things magnesium rods that you can knock and make fire i got to get some of those i don't have that uh but i do have some other fire starters that need fire to get a bigger fire but that's not good enough knives blades edge weapons he says you should have a sword i got my sword back there because things get so crazy and that ammo is out you might have to defend yourself with a sword axe mallet community he says it's important. Uh, make friends, visit farmers markets, establish friendly relationships. One of the things that we ended up doing uh, last week was getting in, uh, familiar with our neighbors. It's great. I told my neighbor, my house is in the front of the neighborhood. So to get to the neighborhood, like which is tucked back there, you got to pass my house. And there's no houses for miles until you get to my house. My house is the first one. So my house is like, you got to get past me before you, if you're going to get to my neighbors. And they all know that. I'm going to put a big, the tallest and biggest American flag I can find right out there on the street. So when people will come down this way, they know, don't come around here messing with us. They ain't going to mess with us. I'm like the only black guy out here, too. <laughs> you got to pass the black guy before you get back here. Uh, what else? Firearms and ammo. That's pretty self-explanatory. Gold and silver, junk silver for bartering. Radio communications. You should have walkie-talkies. I got a bunch of walkie-talkies. You can use with your neighbors. You can use with your family. Stored fuel, diesel in particular. Emergency medicine, antiseptics, iodine, chlorine, dioxide, things of that nature. Um, bandaging, gauze, tourniquets. So things that if you if if like you get injured and you have and you you're bleeding. You got to be able to stop that. We did a, um, I went to a workshop back in January at uh, Full Spectrum Warrior, and we had some guys there that were teaching us how to do, how to make our own tourniquets and stuff like that. It's important to have like basic first aid and things like that. Um, I'm going to go quickly through this list. Uh, herbs and essential oils that you could use for uh, when you get sick. What else? Uh, night vision, thermal blankets, battery Lots and lots and lots of batteries, flashlights, perimeter defense, right? 
and he says dogs are probably your best perimeter defense. I got two dogs. Uh, ballistic vests, right? You should be able to put on your uh, bulletproof vest. I got one of those. Uh, backup stash and bug out plan. Topographical maps, maps of your area, right? One of the things that I have here is a big Florida, a book that has Florida maps, all the back roads, right? You should know where, you, how to get where you need to go, not on the main roads, right? Um, signaling equipment, which means whistles and compass. Uh, he says silent defense, <laughs> right? Crossbows, suppressed weapons, subsonic rounds, reference books, right? Hard copy reference books, do-it-yourself project books. I have, that, that whole shelf right there is survival handbook, woodworking, farming, when technology fails, what to do when there's no doctors, emergency. I mean, pretty much that whole shelf, at least half of that shelf, are reference manuals for what to do if I can't hire someone, right? Like, I don't do my own electricity around the house, right? Because I would rather not. Right? I don't want to blow shit up. So I hire electricians to fix stuff for me, but I have books that will show me what I need to do if I need to do it, right? If I have to, I could do it. Um, food preservation we talked about. Paper, pencils, erasers, personal care, toilet paper. Hygiene products. You should stock up on hygiene products. Eyeglasses, soap, deodorant. Um, Off-grid transportation, bicycles. You should have bicycles, right? We got a bunch of bicycles. Um, Low-tech heat system, right? Like a wood stove, over-the-counter medicine items, right? Anti-itch, anti-diarrhea, diarrhea, painkillers, blood tests, bug spray, all that kind of stuff. Over-the-counter medicine. You should have like a. I have this bag, like a medical bag, and I just I got it stuffed with all these things. Uh, almost there. Off-grid electricity. Um, I had solar at my old house, right? Because I was thinking this way and I was like, look, man, at least I got to invest in something. Back then, I didn't know I was going to live in the country. So I bought solar panels for my house. Now, what I'm probably going to do is get small portable solar arrays. And I'm going to use my the first portable solar array. I'm going to make it so that I can use it on my pump, my um, well pump to get water. But then you should be able to... You should be able to um, Power small items and things like that, right? So solar, off-grid electricity, spare batteries, chargers, sewing kits, tape kits, glue, safety pins, and such. Rugged shoes, shoe repair equipment such as shoe glue, right? Shoes. Think about that, right? We take shit for granted, right? You need a pair of shoes, you just go on Amazon. That might not be available for, to you for weeks, months, or years. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? The whole point here is that who knows? You want to be prepared. Tools, you should have tools, uh, electric and hand drills, uh, hammers, shovels, rakes, gardening, containers such as buckets, barrels, bags, glass jars, uh, aluminum foil, wax, paper, parchment, plumbing repair, pipes, crimps, cutters, connectors, off-grid activities, radio shows, MP3 files, books, games, cards, right? Because you're going to get bored. Spare, spare parts for your car. Fishing rods, reels, strings, and hooks. I got a lake in my backyard. We could, we could fish bass. My daughter caught a bass the other day, and we ate it, and it tastes like ass. Bass tastes like ass. But I tell you what, in a, in a shit hits the fan scenario, in a, in a grid down scenario, I'll eat a whole lot of bass. And then fifth, number 50, which is super important, man, and it's where I spend, I do spend some time here. I need to spend a little bit more time here, but really something that no one can ever take away from you. They can't steal this from you. In fact, it is probably one of your best barter items that can't be stolen, and that is skills, 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 know-how, do it yourself, learn how to repair and maintain everything you own. So this whole list was not my own. It comes from uh, The Tide is Turning, 50 Steps for Survival and Victory Against the Destroyers on naturalnews.com. Uh, Mike Adams, check out his stuff. And if you want to know, uh, once again, where I get my ideas and, and support and resources in terms of survival, he's my go-to guy, dude. So I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. 
Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.